Hi everyone and welcome back to Top Grade. My name is Spencer Miller and today I'm so excited to introduce to you a selection of brand new Canadian picture books for the spring 2023 season. We have so many great picture books to talk about today so let's get started. Our first book for today is Percy's Perfect Friend, published by Pajama Press. It is from the award-winning team of author Lana Button and illustrator Peggy Collins. This is a heartfelt story about learning to socialize through play. When Percy finds himself in a brand new kindergarten classroom full of unfamiliar faces, at first he's a little nervous and a little anxious and alone, and that is until he finds a new friend, a plush friend, who he likes to name Miss Pettycomb. But when another group of children pick up Miss Pettycomb and start playing with her, Percy has to decide if he's going to go back to being alone or if he's willing to share his friend and make a new group of friends along the way. The author of this book, Lana Button, is an early childhood educator herself who knows about the importance of play. Play is so important to help young learners to build imagination, to build social and language skills. This book is perfect for any daycare, preschool, or kindergarten classroom where young learners are just starting to learn to play together. The Little Folk is published by Inhabit Media. It is written by Levi Ulatak and illustrated by Steve James. This is a magical introduction to a traditional Inuit story for young readers. It tells the tale of an Inuk boy who is adopted by Little Folk, a magical race of small Arctic people. A lot of the charm of the story is in the illustrations where you get to see a giant child interacting with the little people, and there's a good lesson to be learned along the way. This is, of course, a traditional story that's been retold or reimagined by Kugaruk elder Levi Ulatak, and along with the brightly colored illustrations, this creates a really fun and interesting way to introduce a new generation of readers to a traditional tale. The Adventures of Grandma Soros at the Supermarket is published by Commandeer Press, written by Carolyn Fernandez and illustrated by Shannon O'Toole. This whimsical picture book series started with the idea, what if your grandma turned into a dinosaur every time that she sneezed? And this one zany idea leads to a bunch of really fun stories. In this installment, um, our two kids are visiting the supermarket with their class and their teacher on a class trip to learn more about healthy foods. And their grandma is there as a supervisor. When she starts sneezing and turning into big hungry dinosaurs, the two kids have to intervene and try and stop her from eating all of the food in the supermarket. It's a lot of fun. I want to praise the inclusion of non-binary characters in this story, our two heroes who have to intervene and save the day and stop grandma from eating all of the food in the supermarket. Um, I think readers will get a real kick out of the role reversal in this story where two young kids have to teach a grandma about responsibility. There are also a load of dinosaur facts and a glossary for added learning. And the book does a great job of highlighting healthy foods and is a good way to also start that conversation in your classroom. Walking Together is published by Anik Press, written by Elder Albert Marshall and Louise Zamani, with illustrations from Emily Kiwagishig. This innovative picture book will introduce young readers to the concept of Eduaptamank, or two-eyed seeing in the Mi'kmaq language. We follow a young group of children as they are taught by nature. We see them interacting closely with the plants, the animals, the water, and learning important lessons about being respectful and reciprocal and responsible in their relationships with all these things. The book has absolutely stunning illustrations that help to draw young readers in. You'll definitely be looking at all of the colors and the details on every page. With its real-world applications, this book is an excellent resource for teachers to help bring together Indigenous teachings and Western science in your classroom. Dunya and the Magic Seeds from Owl Kids Books is written and illustrated by Maria Zarif. This book is based on the animated series on CBC Gem by the same name, um, from the same creator, and introduces uh, readers to a fable-like story about a refugee family. The creator of the story is a Syrian Canadian who is heavily involved with the Syrian refugee community here. And she does a great job of telling the story in a really meaningful way. 
In contrast to the way that refugee families are, are often represented in media as being powerless or, or maybe pushed out or pushed around, the family in this story and the young girl Dunya are represented as being powerful, as being magical, and as playing an active role in deciding their own destiny and in building their own home. This is a really powerful story for young readers to get lost in. In this magical fable, um, it captures the harsh realities of migration while telling the story of a refugee family with a lot of sensitivity and honesty. I really recommend this story as a way to start a conversation in your classroom about refugees and how you can support refugee families and newcomers in your community. Heartberry Bling is published by Highwater Press written by Jenny K. Dupuis, and illustrated by Ava Campbell. This is a really simple story with really powerful meaning underneath it. Um, in the book, a young girl named Maggie goes to visit her granny in the city on the weekend, um, and she's very excited to start her first beading project together. Her grandmother is an expert beater, and Maggie is determined to develop these skills just like her. And it takes a lot of patience and perseverance because beading is much more difficult than it first appears. As they bead together, Granny shares with Maggie why beading has been so important to her in her life. Because of a discriminatory law called the Indian Act, when Granny got married, she lost her status and was forced out of her community. And beading was a way for her to maintain a connection to her culture and to her people. Um, this story is so important. I've never read a children's book that talks about the Indian Act before, and this is a great way to start building levels of understanding in young readers um, to help them learn more about the way that this act has had um, really harsh and terrible consequences in the lives of so many Indigenous people in this country. Um, the book also does a, a great job of highlighting the importance of passing down tradition and cultural practices and will start a really great conversation in your classroom if you ask your students about some of the teachings or lessons or traditions that they are learning about in their homes. The Secret Pocket from Orca Book Publishers is written by Peggy Janicki and illustrated by Carrie Lynn Victor. This non-fiction picture book is the true story of a group of indigenous girls at a Canadian residential school who sewed secret pockets to the inside of their dresses in order to steal food and survive. The story is directly based on the experiences of the author's mother when she attended residential school as a young girl. I work mainly with middle school students and when I teach them about residential schools I always start by checking in and asking them about what they already know about this topic and what they always tell me is about books that they read in elementary school. They remember the titles, they remember the characters, they remember details from the stories. It's these picture books that they read um, that really seem to have an impact on their learning and so I find these books just so vital and important. And I really think that The Secret Pocket is going to have the same impact on young learners. This is a story that is going to really move them and stay with them. And part of what is so great about it is that this is a story of resistance. This is a story about genius as these young girls outsmart the administration at their residential school by using the traditional sewing skills that they learned in their communities. By coming together, they look out for each other they feed each other, and they are able to survive and build a future for themselves. Um, I really hope that you will bring this story into your classroom. I think it is such a gift um, that the author and the author's mother were willing to share their story with us in this way. From Heritage House Publishing, Lillian Bland, Amazing Aviatrix, and Kimiko Murakami, a Japanese-Canadian pioneer, are two picture book biographies written by Haley Healy and illustrated by Kimiko Frazier. I am delighted that Haley Healy and Kimiko Frazier are teaming up again to continue teaching us about trailblazing women in Canadian history. Last season, I got to talk about um, their book for middle grade readers, Her Courage Rises, which was one of my favorites. And so I was just so happy to see that they are now creating picture books so that even younger readers can learn about these important stories. These books tell the amazing life story of Lillian Bland, the first woman ever to design, build, and fly her own airplane, and the inspiring and true life story of Kimiko Murakami, a Japanese-Canadian pioneer and internment camp survivor. 
These beautifully illustrated picture books are perfect for teaching about women's history in the elementary school classroom. I know that these books are going to inspire young readers as they are introduced to these important but overlooked figures in Canadian history. No Horses in the House, The Audacious Life of Artist Rosa Bonheur is published by Orca Book Publishers, written by Mireille Messier, and illustrated by Anna Braun. This delightful picture book tells the true story of 19th century painter Rosa Bonheur, who defied gender expectations and changed the art world with her realistic animal drawings. In this fictionalized account, we follow young Rosa growing up at a time when women weren't allowed to be artists. But Rosa is creative and determined. She dresses up in boys' clothes to be able to sneak into the animal houses to study the animals close up. And she also brings the animals home, which will cause a little bit of giggles and laughter in your classroom as we get this image of a horse in the house. Um, but we can learn so much from Rosa's example of determination and not letting anyone else decide our destinies for us. The illustrations in this story are playful and vibrant, and they're going to leave readers in your classroom wanting to draw their own animal pictures, so make sure you have the pencil crayons ready. The book is also available in French as Pas de Chevaux dans la maison. And those are all of the books that we have to talk about today. On behalf of the Association of Canadian Publishers, thank you so much for watching. We love hearing from you. We hope that you'll comment with the picture books that you're excited to bring into your classroom. We also hope that you will subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow along for more great Canadian book content. And one last thing is to give a big thank you to Ontario Creates for their continued support of the Top Grade program. Visit the new and improved topgradebooks.ca to watch more videos, to see and download book lists, to explore books by grade level, check out blog posts with reading and classroom activities, and more.